Hey, how's it going? Dylan here. If you're following me on Twitter, you'd probably know by now that I'm a massive fan of anamorphic imagery. In my opinion, it's the single best way to shoot film or TV series, anything really. It is a really nice kind of shape to frame for, and you can get some really beautiful images from it. Today, we're going to be jumping down the rabbit hole of what anamorphic lenses are and how they work. This is going to be part one of a series where I go through the history of anamorphic lenses right up until the modern day and uh, how they're used at the moment. So sit back, have a nice coffee and enjoy. This intro episode is going to be kind of not super long just as a kind of to get you into the series. Uh, but let's take a look at anamorphic lenses. Anamorphic lenses were developed to be able to present a wide field of view but using standard 35mm film and camera equipment. They achieve this by having a cylindrical element instead of a spherical element, which squeezes a wide image down onto the super 35mm frame. Doing this is much, much more pre preferable to simply just cropping the standard image because of two main factors. One, you're not actually wasting any areas of the frame using an anamorphic lens. So you're essentially still using all of the resolution that's available to you, therefore getting a much sharper image compared to cropping. Let's take a look at this visually to get the point across. Here we have a standard super 35 millimeter frame. Now let's say we attach a 90 millimeter lens into, in front of the frame to the camera and we get an image much like this. But what if we wanted to get a wide aspect ratio? Well, we could crop down the image, like as you can see here. It looks okay, but we're literally wasting all of the space and resolution on the top and bottom of the frame. You're also basically zooming in on the image, so you're not getting all of the vertical kind of view of the 90 millimeter. Let's put an identical 35 millimeter frame next to this one. But instead of placing a 90 millimeter standard lens in front of it, let's place a 90 millimeter anamorphic lens in front of it with a two times squeeze factor. Basically, that means it's gonna squeeze the image by a factor of two in the horizontal plane. And this is what we get. It looks really stretched vertically, uh, but we'll fix that in a moment. When we stretch it out horizontally, by about two or 1.9 times, depending on the lens. We get this amazing wide ratio, but we're not losing any information in terms of resolution. We're still using the entire frame, so it's very economical. And so we have the full frame to at our disposal. We can also see that unlike when we crop, we still have a standard 90 millimeter equivalent vertical field of view, but a horizontal field of view equivalent to half of that, so a 45 millimeter wide. This is what gives you this really interesting look, which is the second advantage of it. You get a very medium format look because you're getting the depth of field of a 90 millimeter lens with the angle of view of a 45 millimeter lens, which is why it kind of imitates the medium format look where you get a very shallow depth of field and it looks very interesting. There are also a few side effects of the optics with anamorphic lenses that have become sought after by filmmakers. Because of the nature of the squeezed optics, out of focus areas are stretched vertically and produce a beautiful oval shaped bokeh, which is very aesthetically pleasing most of the time. Lastly, perhaps the most well known ingredient to the anamorphic look is the lens flare. Lens flares in most anamorphic lenses have unique properties that are impossible to fully replicate, including the trademark horizontal streaks and glow which usually kind of go towards the blue color. When you dig down, anamorphic was really created as a cost cutting measure so that filmmakers could use the same equipment they already have and the same film stock and processing facilities that they already had available as well. All by just attaching a specialized lens on the camera and then on the projector when shown to de-squeeze it. Obviously, in current times, we do it all digitally, which is a lot easier and there's no optical loss. In future episodes, I plan to explore the history of anamorphic lenses right up until the developments and uses of today's filmmakers. Hope you enjoyed my first little episode of this small series, and be sure to hit that like button, it really helps a lot. 
If you'd like to see more, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified of new up uploads when they go live. Hit me up on Twitter or in the comments below, and I'm always up for a chat. Technical, about movies, everything. Be on the lookout for some other videos coming. I'm slowing down videos to kind of get a bit more quality over quantity going, but let's see how that goes. Until next time, take care.